Inter-Miami pick number three, Paul, who are we looking at? Yeah, we are going to take Lee Wynn from LAFC. Okay, another MLS veteran. What was it about him? Yeah, I mean, MLS veteran. Uh, he was a captain in New England when they had a great run. Uh, was part of the expansion process in LAFC. And um, I think the way Lee plays, it'll really fit in well with what we're trying to do with the team. All right. Thanks, Paul. Lee Wynn, former uh, moniker MV Lee. Mm. He's played very well up the field, and he's played a little bit farther back the last two seasons with LAFC for Bob Bradley. 33 years old now, eight years in less experience, has uh, 48 games played, 31 starts over two years for LAFC, three goals, 12 assists, including the playoffs. Still does have the final project, product, but can play a lot of different places. This is a experience pick, it seems like, for Paul with upside. Absolutely, and a possession one. <laughs> and it, Look, especially as you progress in your career, I would say if you're into Miami, it's promising to see that Lee Wynn is okay switching positions and maybe sacrificing a little bit of himself and his production, his numbers for the team. So when you see now maybe him, he gets to return to a little bit more of an advanced position with Inner Miami. You know the qualities, you know the experience. He's, again, seen a lot of MLS, some of the poor side, and then also what it's like to be a part of a successful franchise, uh, an expansion team with LAFC. That's going to be invaluable for what Inter Miami is trying to do. Yeah, it seems like it. And look, Paul McDonough came on ETR the other day and said, we're going to use both our DP slots. You assume one of those would be on a 10. But Lee Wynn is kind of insurance for that. Like, if they don't get that deal across the line in January or February, they can hold out until the, the summer window opens because they have Lee Wynn to play that position, and we know he could do it well. I, I do... Like, I don't think there is any flexibility with him. I don't think they're going to use him deeper the way that Bob Bradley did. We saw against Seattle uh, that he's kind of a liability there. I would expect to see him on the ball in the attacking third a ton trying to combine with guys like Pellegrini and Carranza. A big name coming off the board here, Lee Wynn. LAFC will get $50,000 in GAM, as every club does, when they have a player taken in this expansion draft. For Vasquez, like, there's an opening to play a lot of minutes at center forward in Cincinnati. This, I know it's not a great team by any stretch, but this, if you want, if you want to make your name as a young player, this is his chance. Here is your details. Uh, we have those officially now. 150k in 2020 TAM for Brandon Vasquez, 50k in 2021 GAM. So a uh, total price tag of 200k. Nashville gets some assets as they continue to build that offsets some of the spending that they have so far done on the trade market on guys like Dave Romney, Anibal Godoy, as well as Dax McCarty. Uh, there's the Brandon Vasquez trade. How about Joe Willis? Well, I was going to say, uh, as a former Houston guy, I was happy to see Zarek uh, land in Houston. I think he'll be able to help that team. Um, but, yeah, Joe Willis has been Mr. Reliable. He's not a guy that uh, has been handed starting jobs, but has continually found himself as a starter in MLS, and that's based on his performance uh, with D.C. and then goes to Houston. Now he'll have, he'll have his opportunity for an expansion team, a guy that's seen a lot in MLS, will be able to uh, – I, I think he could be the starter for this team. So. Uh, that's a that's a nice little trade, I think, for both teams. Absolutely. Joe Willis with a ton of experience in MLS. I am told that there is another trade coming down right here, and here you have the details. Nashville SC is getting Adrian Zendejas from Sporting Kansas City. He was, as you said earlier, Caitlin, behind an immovable force <laughs> in Tim Melia. Yes. Now moving to Nashville for allocation money and a 2020 international roster spot. So two guys to compete for the goalkeeper position so far, Zendejas as well as Joe well, Willis. We talked about, we, sorry to interrupt, but we, we talked about positions of need and what you can get out of this expansion draft. And we've seen left backs and goalkeepers. Yeah. Both, te both teams have selected now two goalkeepers, keep either through, uh, through trades or yes. maneuvers or whatever you want to yeah. call it. But Zendejas is, is a guy that's been behind Tim Melia. I think he's 6'5". He has spent time yep. in Mexico, has come back. He has a ton of talent, good with his feet, can, can a great shot stopper. So when you add both of those guys, him oh. and Willis, that, that's a nice one. Speaking of left backs, look what else is official. <laughs> Daniel Lovitz, U.S. national team left back. Headed to Nashville SC. Ugh. Montreal moving him for a package of GAM, TAM, and an international roster spot. So Dax McCarty cost them 100K and a draft pick. Now Daniel Lovitz costs 100K and an international roster spot. They have Madronda 
and Love. It's, they got cover at left back now. Yeah, they have Madron and Love. Dave Romney can play there a little bit as well, so I don't think they're going to have to line up in any games without a left footer at left back. Look, Lovitz is a U.S. national team player. Um, he, he is a guy who has played the spot at a high level the last couple of years for Montreal. He's negotiating a new salary. We assume that's probably done if they've just made the trade for him. Um, but this is like this team is starting to shape up now. You have guys who have done it in this league, like Dax, Annabelle Godoy in central midfield, Jaleel Anababa in center back, Joe Willis at goalkeeper, uh, Daniel Lovitz at left back. Like Once you have a spine of MLS veterans like that, then you could start taking a few bigger swings at maybe bigger name players who have high ceiling, maybe low floor as well. And it won't kill you because if they don't work out, plug in an MLS veteran, you're going to be all right. Mike Jacobs has said repeatedly that he doesn't want to be an expansion team that rushes out to fill spots, that gets rid of all their assets, that thinks they're the smartest guys in the room. Kalen, you often at this desk, when we talk about this league and roster building, lean on the MLS experience side. What does it mean as an expansion team in your mind to have a glut of that? Because that's what it seems Nashville is building. Well, you just look at the expansion teams that have been successful in years past. And I've mentioned a couple of these names in similar positions across the back line, value guys like Jordan Harvey, what he's meant to this LAFC team. Uh, you look at Michael Parkhurst with the tackle he made <laughs> and Jeff Loreno. It's at, I, you, I know Atlanta United has all the star-studded attack, but that's what they're Paul not McDuff a, They're not Atlanta United without those two and guys. They don't have a trophy without yeah. those two guys. Yeah. And when you look at what Paul McDonough said about having that MLS experience and where they're going to spend, it's going to be on that attack because that's just the way the market uh, just decides this, yeah. that you have to go out and pay money goals for goals. Money. <laughs> like the 19 of the 20 last year leading MLS, so if you can go, or DP. If you can get quality defense at and versatile defenders who have MLS experience and are good locker room guys, including goalkeepers, and that set that back line. That gives you a real base to move forward from. Dax and Anibal Godoy, is mm -hmm. that the right mix at central midfield? I mean, those two guys, and you have Derek Jones as well, the young player, former Philly homegrown, who has a ton of upside. Um, I like that rotation there. The, like Dax is a gamer. We've seen it for a dozen years in this league now. Annabelle Godoy was stuck on those uh, Quakes teams that were very poor, but he was always a good trooper. He was the captain of the Panama team that made the World Cup, and I thought he played well this year before he got that injury. They're, they're not going out there to score 85 goals and get 70 points. They're looking to hang around and compete, maybe sneak into the playoffs with some veteran know-how and just being hard to play against. And I look at that spine, this is not going to be an easy team to play against. They're not going to give up 65, 70 goals. No, and I think Madronda is probably going to slide more into that middle of midfield. Once I saw Lovitz come yeah. with that trade, that's probably their starting left back. Madronda can play both, but as that number eight, maybe just a step ahead of Dak. But either way, it's, it's crazy to to look at this and say this is an expansion team that has left back depth. Yeah. <laughs> it might be the first time ever. By the way, again, little birdie Amir telling me that we have another trade that is official. Where am this I going? Time, oh. Inter Miami. Uh, yeah, you're out of here. Get We're shipping here, you away. Yeah. Your re entry draft material, Doyle. Uh, a first round super draft pick going to Inter Miami. That gives them two in the top three. They have the top overall selection. They now have the number three from FC Cincinnati, 150K huh. in 2020 games. So, Paul McDonough, who knows the college game, who, by the way, drafted Miles Robinson and Julian Gressel, picks up two super draft picks in the top three. Thoughts? You're saying the super draft isn't dead? I, I'm <laughs> telling you the super draft is not dead. I'm trusting Paul McDonough on that one. I like it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because if you look at the cap hit, like if you even go one for two on the first and third pick, you're getting a guy at like a minimum salary for three or four years who can save you cap space, who can probably play uh, you know, at a high level, a high rate when you look at the type of athletes that come out of college. Look at LAFC. Yeah. Blackman, Blackman and Jao Moutinho, right? Yeah. Moutinho ha had some nice moments but then gets moved on. But Blackman played a big role for yep. them down the stretch in the playoffs. Those are the pieces when you look at this roster building where that one little trade for Tam or Gam ends up into a pick that could be a Blackman or a Julian Gressel that can really help you. And I think the thing that we take away from this night with both teams, other than Lee Wynn, cap flexibility was at the premium tonight. Like, nobody went out and got, like, a high cap hit guy. We see the trades coming back. They forced stuff like Gam or Tam or, like, a off-budget, basically, goalkeeper or a super draft pick. So there's a 
ton of moves coming for Value. both of these sides. Yes. Value. One note, one note for you at home. If players selected in this expansion draft, they got to be on the senior roster. <laughs>